Well, this is going to be weird and morbid. There it goes. Yeah, I was hoping to get better timing on that, but the game didn't want to come, didn't want to cooperate. As you just saw, I found a recipe in the Lexica Batania for creating a player head, which means that we can replace the old crunky one we have on the altar for a much sexier one. And that gives us a much sexier amount of power. Because today, we are going to be doing a little bit more witchery. Hello, welcome back to Regrowth. Between episodes, I did a m mostly a little bit of just behind-the-scenes work. I glowified most of our working areas. I uh, evened out some of, the, some of the spacing on it. You can see that I couldn't find a decent grass substitute for the ones in the Batania area, but I just picked something that was relatively pretty that didn't clash. And eventually we'll get this grass changing colors when we can move things on it to change its biome. I finalized our smeltery tables. I think this is the configuration I will go with until the end of time. It casts evenly and it casts eight at once. Originally, I tried pouring out of these two taps at the same time, but that proved to be a little bit buggy. So it's just set up to one, and it is button press activated, so I don't need to climb up to that tap every single time. Downstairs, we have a little bit of mana built up. This system is still going strong. And I am producing a steady profit of magical food. So, about what we're going to be doing today. Oh yes, and I did decide on something to spend all this mana on. I am wearing a tainted blood pendant of vanity's emptiness. You can see its effect over here. And actually, if I take my just play it off. You can see that it's actually visible on my on my avatar. That's pretty cute. Sadly, the armor covers it up. But yes, Vanity's Emptiness, if you'll remember, is that buff that allows us to... Uh, it basically turns off mob spawning for the most part. You do occasionally get one or two, but it's it's nothing you can't handle. It is definitely much more workable. So... All that glowifying we did is going to pay off because we are going to be working all day and night now. Also, I made some of these cable facades. They are just made out of a uh, structure pipe and three of the block you would like them to be a facade of. And I prettied up some of our water pipes. They are running underground for the most part now, so that is a little bit prettier. Now, if you recall, before we went off squirreling around with all of that magic questing to get golems and other such things, we were working on technology. I know, it's been a while. And we had reached a point in our technology where the only thing... Uh, where we reached a lock where we are going to need titanium. Now... I upgraded my pick to Terra Steel. I could go and start mining titanium in the nether, but I think that even with my fancy fancy Mobno Spani, I am going to want some form of flight to make searching the nether a lot easier. And I've decided that the easiest means of flight that I can access right now is an enchanted broomstick. From witchery. I've never tried it before, and I hear it's an actually rather fun and different type of flight, so it should be fun. Now, to get that enchanted broom, we are going to need to set up a magic circle, and we are also going to need to set up a kettle. Grows is the witchery quest. 
the kettle, at least, is a quest for us. And I believe that we have our first couple of quests for setting up magic circles and doing circle magic. Ah yes, also between episodes, I just crafted all the witchery books. They will be a useful reference. And also I read somewhere that they are quest locks. So hopefully as we progress further in the book, we will get some more quests unlocked. Now, oops. Our first one to make is a kettle. Something is following me. Uh, yes, I, I also did a bunch of Thomcraft research, and from one of the Thomcraft quests, under the way the world feels, I think it was this one, I got some more loot bags, and I got another knowledge fragment. And this is enough Whisperweed that I can basically stand here with this lever on and do research, and I will earn research points faster than I can spend them for the most part. So that is very sexy. But yes, we need to make a kettle. That is just a attuned stone, a cauldron, some string, and some sticks. Okay. We have lots of lovely grape-flavored stones. A cauldron and all the rest of that stuff is all very easy. And I believe that like the cauldron that we have, it needs to be provided with water and it needs a fire underneath it. Now, the kettle is basically Witchery's potion brewing system. And potions and spells are kind of... Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the kettle or if it's the cauldron. I'm not sure what the difference and what the uses are. I'm not as familiar with Witchery as I would like to be. Anyway, I will stop talking about things I do not know, and I will get to learning them. So, that is the kettle crafted. Let's get some netherrack. Let's see if the quest is done. It teaches. Ah. Huh. Okay, so making that kettle unlocked that, and I imagine that making the chalk or something is going to unlock this quest, because that looks like the book for circle magic. And let's, let's turn that in. Brew of love. Hmm. Huh. What does that do? I think it just gives you... It's, it's a throwable potion, of course. Well, I just threw love away. That is just my life. Anyway, let us get some more pipes. I believe I have some liquid pipes. Yes, there I do. And I think I have some more structural things. Maybe I don't. That's okay, I can just show you how they're crafted. Well, I mean, I've showed you how they're crafted, but... Yeah, you just get those. Okay, so let's set up our kettle. Ah, yes, and I was checking to see if the kettle quest was completed, but I shall do that in a minute. Let's just put it right next to the cauldron. Actually, let's put it two away from the cauldron. And I'm going to have to... Oh, dear. I think I just got blindness. Yes. Thankfully, it's not too bad. I can more or less still see, and I know my way around well enough. Okay, there we go. That is all better. So, let's light the pyre. For a moment I thought I'd lost another flint and steel. That would have been depressing. Let's put down the kettle. Hmm, a little awkward just hanging there, but oh well. And let us run over some pipe. We can just put that over there. 
Okay. I don't think I have any more French cobblestone. So I am going to have to make some. That must stone, you take it and you turn it French. And that cobble is aligned cobblestone bricks. That is why I don't usually decorate, I think, because you have to balance so many types of blocks, but chisel makes it somewhat easier. So I will show you these facades. You simply take a structure pipe, you take it that, and then you do this. And it just goes right on the side. Of, you do need a couple of them because it is only one per side, but you can form up whatever shape of block your heart desires. And we'll just make some more lined brick ones to cover the floor. And that is how you hide things with buildcraft pipes. So, I believe I was checking. I'm, I'm just going to leave these pipes and this other stuff here. Because this is kind of the area for them. That is using them, anyway. Yes. Okay, it does say it has water in it. So, is the quest complete? How the world grows? Yes. Yes, it do. Dream a little dream. Brew of Sleeping. Ah, I've read about that. That is one of the witchery dimensions, and it is uh, not too terribly great. You know what? I don't care about all these water bottles. I will keep the regular bottles, just in case, though. So... <clears throat> Let us then, if... I don't have anything else unlocked. Let us then start to work on the circle magic. And yes, I, I did make the kettle for more reasons than just the quest, but we will get into that as we go. So I need to make this ritual chalk. Ritual chalk is made out of a bunch of wood ash and some gypsum and some tears of the goddess. Gypsum I can make with click lime quick lime and foul fumes. Quick lime can just be made out of more wood ash. So, do I have any foul fumes? Yes, I do. Let's make eight of those. Let's grab eight of those. And let us put that, I believe it was in the distillery. Yes. Okay, so that's the gypsum sorted. Now let us start to make the... Well, I have to wait on that distillery. So I'll just gather up the ingredients. Or do I have any Tears of the Goddess? I do. I have one. That'll do. And what else did I need? Just a bunch of ash. Okay, so once this distillery is distilled... Oil of vitriol and some gypsum. Okay. And I already had a piece of gypsum from doing something else. So we can just combine all that. And actually, I think that maybe I might have some new things in there. Nope. Nope. Nope, I was wrong. Still, inventory scanning is really good for that. Okay, ritual chalk, that is definitely new. Yes. Is that the quest? No, it is not. It needs us to make a golden chalk as well, which we need for the circle anyway. So, a golden chalk is just a mandate root, a gold nugget, and a piece of chalk. That's all easy enough. So, a uh, mandrake root. I should have some gold in the nearby Thawncraft chest. Yes, there is a gold nugget. Okay, and what was the order? Root, nug, and stick. 
And yes, another nice thing, these facades are much easier to stand on than pipes. It gives you a nice little place to do your thing. Another chalk. And how much altar power? Well, I, I basically don't have to worry about altar power anymore. But let's see anyway. How much does it cost? That costs like 3,000-ish. So yeah. It's not cheap. We're just rich. No? Really? Nothing. Okay. And that gives us the other two types of chalk, the infernal and the otherware chalk. So, let us talk a little bit about how circle magic works. Like the name implies, we have to lay down a massive magic circle. And it is a pretty specific pattern depending on the ritual you want to do. Oh, I have the bookbinder right in here, of course. Let's see, I have the Witchery Circle Magic book, and it is pretty much essential. You need this thing on you to look up what type of circle you need for what type of ritual. Or you need the wiki. Either way. But yeah, you see these circles get pretty big. The max size is 15 by 15, which I think actually can't fit within the space we have. Hmm. We might have to expand the witchery working area a little bit. Anyway, I think the only important spot is the center of the circle, which will have to draw altar power. So, let us talk about this enchanted broom that we're going to make. In order to make the enchanted broom, I'm going to need to make a special uh, salve in the kettle, and then I am going to have to infuse it onto the broom in a magic circle. And that is just going to be a lot of crafting. Let me see. The brew I need is the infused brew of soaring, I do believe. Is it? I'm not sure. Hold on. Let me consult the wiki. Oh boy, I uh, I just got a pretty bad warp effect here. This is one of the top tier ones. You get this blinding, choking fog, and you get these guys coming after you, who shoot projectiles that give you a wither. And they are pretty tough. Thankfully, so are we. Now, I think that should be it. But this fog is going to stay around for a few minutes. But yeah, those guys are the Eldritch Guardians, and they are your indication that uh, you, are, you are getting too far, and forces beyond your ken are starting to stand against you. This is very ominous. Okay... I've just finished measuring and laying out and trying my damnedest to center to our work area my ritual circle setup. I used these essence lamps made from magic crops. That's just um, one of the essences surrounded by smooth stone, and then you take the resulting block it gives you and you surround a glowstone essence with it, and that gives you a glowing colored block. I decided on green because the three colors of chalk are white, red, and purple, and I figure they will all show up pretty well against it, and also our witchery area is very green. So, to lay down a piece of chalk, you just right-click. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't right-click. Is it a problem with the chalk? Nope. <sighs> it can't lay down on the lamps. Okay, I guess I'll replace these for something else. Okay, I selected this chisel limestone to make out my circle tiles, and I tested, and uh, yeah, it works with the microblocks covers, so I don't have to worry about my lighting being interrupted. So as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, you just lay out the circle by right-clicking down 
on the chalk. It lays out these random runes, and you lay out the circle for whatever ritual you need as laid out in the book. Okay, let's try this thing out. I have three large white circles laid out, and I have something called a circle talisman. And if I understand how this works correctly, if I throw this down with some redstone and then activate the ritual, it should suck these circles up into the talisman and then allow me to place down these circles again really quickly anytime I want. So I think to activate this, you just throw down both items somewhere within the ritual circle and then you right click on the rune. And I will have to put down Solignolias apparently. Ooh. So that says small ritual, medium ritual, large ritual. Ah, yeah, okay, so it lists them on there. So I don't have to name this in a table or something in order to figure it out. So apparently ritual is just the generic name for a white circle. Now, is this single use? No, but it does, however, empty out, and then I will need to have, like, a stack of redstone in this in this chest here that I'm keeping my ritual things in. And then just whenever I need to change circles, I can suck up the old one. And eventually I can have a collection of different types of circles for all occasions for quick use. I think that should be nice. Do you remember this mutating sprig we made for a quest way back when? Well, I think it's about time I started using it. I've laid out a little ritual for it here, which has a chest sitting over a water source and four pieces of tall grass. And if I right-click the chest, if I sneak right-click... No? What happened? Did I accidentally delete the water source? No. Does it have to be higher up? Let me get another bucket of water. Okay. And then I think if I there. And then I should be able to just stop. Son of a bitch. Okay. I need to get another piece of tall grass and I need to get a block for me to actually put that chest in the proper position with. And I'll just, no, living rock. Okay. Hey, yeah, yeah. You can tell I've never done this before. It's my first time. Be gentle. Okay, we put the chest there over the still water. We put then the grass. And we shift. There we go. That formed up some grass purrs. These are funny little blocks. If you toss a thing onto them, they. No? Okay, do I have to right click it? Yes. They hold onto it. And. That counts as the block being in the square for the purposes of a ritual. So, yes, I can just pick these guys up. That's good to know. And I don't think they require dirt. They do not contain any essentia. So, I think if I just... yeah. Okay, let's try that out. Let's grab one of these. Let's grab a one of those. If I do this and this, and as you can see, they are not attracted by my magnet. Yeah. Zoom. Okay. So, I don't need Solignolias after all. I have a witchery solution. One thing you should note is that the circles don't need to be exact. So long as you have all the circles that are necessary 
a ritual will still work. So for example, this rite of charging to charge up in a tombstone requires the two inner circles to be white, but does not care about the outer circle. So if I take the necessary ingredients and plunk them down, I know, where did you go? This book binder, what is it? <sighs> go away. Stop messing with me. But yes, so long as the inner two circles are white, the outer circle can be anything. It can be missing, it can be red, it can be purple, it can be whatever. That's what I wanted to get at before I was uh, so rudely interrupted. And I don't believe the placement of the items matters at all. It's not like Thomcraft infusion. Yes! All that it requires is that you have sufficient altar power and that you have all the items present. And the circles present. Doesn't care about any other circles. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how to use the kettle. I've assembled together the ingredients for redstone soup. I think we just... Oh, hello. I'll get to you in a minute. I don't think it matters what order you throw these in with the kettle. It appears to be burbling. White particles, little bits of slime. Is, is that good? I am not sure. Do I maybe need to bottle it up? Let's try. Yes, okay. So that is how you use the kettle. You have to use a bottle on it. I chose redstone soup because it is another accoutrement for our altar. If I take this chalice that I made, which is a thing that adds to its power, and I use it with the redstone soup, I get a filled chalice. And that should make the altar even more overpowered. I think the only upgrades left that we can put on it are increases to its recharge rate. So the only way it's going to get more powerful than this is if I expand the grotto. And this, I think, is more than powerful enough to do everything we're going to need it to do. Ah, that feels good. Huh. Dry. Wet. Dry. Wet. Weather is weird. So yeah, I guess you can see the borders of how far this log is, well, this node inside the log, is spreading the magical forest biome. You see that it eventually evens out as a square shape. Let's see here. Let's... One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven blocks in every direction, apparently. Okay. So, I have prepped all of the ingredients for the broom. I have the broom itself, which is the simplest part of it. It's just some sticks and some hawthorn saplings. And I have this flying ointment, which required more redstone soup, and I'll just show you how that's made. That's... A couple mob drops, a couple of flowers. Uh, Bull of Bat is also a mob drop. It's from, of course, bats. And this drew. No. Oh, two at once? Okay, you've. You've seen these jokers before. But that other one, that was. The one that's turning my vision all pink. It's actually red, but this. This, uh. This fog. I got a sudden and unnatural hunger. You notice how fast my hunger is going down? Yeah, I need to eat rotten flesh to tick down the time on this debuff. I think it goes down by a minute for each one that I eat. So I'm keeping a stack 
No, it went down by like a couple of minutes there. So yeah, I'm keeping a bunch of rotten flesh in my bag. Just in case I get that, because it's a fairly frequent warp effect. And I guess we get mistiness now. Anyway, I have the flying ointment. And uh, the redstone soup is made of all that. All that stuff is easy except for the drop of luck, which requires a couple of distillery ingredients. You've seen Tears of the Goddess before, but refined evil? That requires diamond vapor and ghast tears. Diamond vapor requires that oil of vitriol. And that is, uh, yeah... It was a bit of a processing chain getting the drop of luck. And was that the only hard part? Uh, just a extended potion of swiftness. That's like uh, water plus wart plus sugar plus redstone in a vanilla style alchemy thing. And we have a little bit of a wit ahead of us and I'm not actually sure what time it is now thanks to Hopefully that'll wear off soon. But yeah, the the good book says, if I can find where it is. Let's see. Is it in this section? Protection. No, it, I, it's infusion. Okay. Because I'm infusing the broom. Yes. The ritual must be performed at night. Apparently it's specific about this kind of thing. Oh, and also I was a little bit wrong. There are some rites. Uh, banishing, banishing, summoning, yeah. There are some rites where it says the inner area must be clear. So apparently, I'm not sure if that includes graspers or if it's just the runes. So, I will get back to you in a couple of minutes when it is time to perform the infusion. Oh, creepy. It is a dark and starless night. A proper night for glorious flight. Boop. Ooh. Okay, okay, before I get too excited. Okay, now I can get excited. No, do I have to? Okay, I, I think I read that it's kind of like a horse, so maybe I have to. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Is this, oh. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, that's a treat. Oh God. Oh, God. Oh, this is janky. Oh, this is fast. No, no, stop. Stop. Okay, I think I need to be back in first person. Okay, I can only turn it when I'm... Oh, I see. It follows my sight. Okay, I can't strafe. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, this is legit cool. This is legit cool. Permission to buzz the tower. Oh, this is going to take so much getting used to. Okay, now does 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 it does it suffer some harm if I crash? Let's crash into that. Oh, I missed. I tried to crash it. Oh, okay. I thought shift would go down. Okay, so... I guess that in order to go down, I have to point myself down. No, it looks like crashing doesn't hurt. At least not crashing at that speed. <laughs> okay, I need to actually see what I'm doing. Much better. Um, yeah, what up, ladies? I think that's enough for today. So, 
next time. <laughs> oh, oh no, oh god. <laughs> I've discovered strange new methods of transportation. <laughs> Oh, this is all the jank. Okay. Next time, between episodes... Oh, this is... this is weird. Between episodes, I'll get used to this. And I will go on a nether expedition, because I'm sure that you don't want to watch any more of that nonsense. Especially not with new and mysterious means of... <laughs> And I will get myself all the ores I need to continue on our quests for industry. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'll see you next time.